We've done videos in the past on the best scout players to use in Inazuma 11 games. But today, we're going to talk about the story players, the ones you're actually required to use. And we're going to start with Inazuma 11 1, and we're going to rank every story player from worst to best. And to help with this video, I've teamed up yet again with Zikria AK, who because of his massive big brain in Azuma 11 knowledge has massively helped me out with this video. And just a quick little note before we jump in, uh, you're going to see whenever I'm talking about a player, you're going to see numbers here um, with goalkeeper, defender, midfielder and forward. That's how good they are in each position. With one being that they're terrible in that position, don't use them. And five being they're amazing in that position. That's just because some players are maybe a bit better in other positions than they are in their actual positions. Without further ado, let's dive straight in. Unsurprisingly, at number 15 is Willie Glass. He gets Divine Arrows if you like really, really train him up, but the rest of his moves he just unfortunately gets way too late to be useful at all. So yeah, he does just absolutely suck. Literally no redeeming qualities. You may not have expected this, but at number 14 is Bobby Shearer. Early game, Bobby is absolutely dreadful and so much worse than even Jim Rath because of Killer Slide. Yeah, it's low TP, but it's insanely high foul rate, so there's barely even any point in using him. He gets Blade Attack down the line, and then he becomes an actually decent defender. He also gets back Tornado, but learns it too late for it to really be any use. But the reason he's so low is because of his early game. Also, Zikria AK dared me to call him Booby Shitter. So, so there it is. Just above him is his equally terrible defensive partner, Jim Rath who is just really bad. He learns after image, which is all right, but about face is just so, so dreadful. Again, that really high foul rate. He also has a really slow level up rate, which is just perfect for a player who sucks anyway. He's just really bad, but he's, I guess, more consistently bad than Bobby, but is be slightly better early game. So it, it does even itself out somehow. This is kind of cheating, but at number 12 is Eric Eagle. He joins way too late to be any higher on the list, but he definitely, if you're just going off stats and shit, shouldn't be this low on the list. It's a weird one. He's technically optional, but he's here anyway because he is basically a story player. He's in the anime. That counts. He's very good against Zeus, but obviously literally can't be good for any other match. He's Jude without Inazuma Break, like literally has Spinning Cut and Illusion Ball, so he is essentially Jude, just lacking Inazuma Break, which is cool. Number 11 is the top lad himself, Todd Ironside, who is the first example of a player who's a lot better in a different position, and not Willie Glass level of different, because obviously Willie Glass just kind of sucks in every position. Todd is a much better midfielder because he does not learn a single defensive move. Why would they do that to my guy? Timmy is essentially Todd, but slightly better at shooting. Yep. Meanwhile, Sam is basically Steve, but he gets his move slightly earlier, but on the trade-off that they're slightly weaker. Except Steve has Stab Zigzag Spark, while Sam only has Bewildered, and Zigzag Spark is definitely better. Speaking of Steve, he is a better Sam. He's very, very balanced. He learns his moves slightly too late compared to everyone else. So he is just genuinely completely average. His stats are basically the same everywhere. And he's just fine. Zigzag Spark is really good on him though. Next, we have Jack Wallside, who is phenomenal early game with the wall, which is a really good defensive move. But then he doesn't get anything else until level 40. So that's kind of stupid. He has a really slow level up rate as well. So he does kind of fall off. But then eventually in the post game, he gets Mega Quake, which is sick. And now he's amazing. But then who's going to play IE1's post game? Oh, I see you in the comments. Mm, TXM, you're going to say that Nathan Swift isn't that, like, shouldn't actually be used as a defender and should be used as a midfielder. That's what this entire video is for. No, no. Nathan Swift is actually a pretty decent defender with really spammy moves. And then when he gets Fire Rooster, he becomes a really good forward option as well. He's essentially good everywhere. So yeah, contrary to popular belief, maybe you should play Nathan as a defender. Just this once though, just this once. Kevin gets a 51 TP shot in chapter two. That's enough to secure top five regardless of anything else. 
Unfortunately, he can't use it as many times because of low TP, but he does eventually get Zigzag Spark, which is also quite nice. He's not great against Zeus, but aside from that, he is one of the most reliable forwards in the game. Jude joins really late, kind of pulling him back a bit, but his move pool is absolutely fantastic. Spinning Cut, Illusion Ball, in a Zuma Break. He's great in every single position, obviously, except for in goal. But he's really good and is really good against Zeus within a Zuma break. But again, can't put him top three because he does join really late in the game. I can bet you were not expecting this because Maxwell Carson is really bloody good in this game. He gets quick draw and spiral shots super early on which makes him a really good forward if you play him in the way where he steals the ball off defenders with quick jaw and then shoots with spiral shot. So in that way, he's actually really effective. And he gets illusion ball, which makes him a pretty good dribbler on top of that. He doesn't use up too much TP with these moves as well, so he can do it quite a lot. And what you end up with is a really effective, efficient player. So yeah, it turns out Maxwell Carson, kind of based. Now, I can bet that you knew that these two would be the top two. But I also think you have no idea what the order is going to be. So let me reveal it to you. At number two, Axel Blaze. Really good stats, really fast level growth, a move in every position, learned early, and really good shots with Fire Tornado and Inazuma Drop. He's simple, easy to use, but he's not that great against Zeus. I also think his moves kind of taper off near the end. There's a certain point when Fire Tornado and Inazuma Drop kind of get outclassed by some other moves like Inazuma Break and Dragon Tornado. But finally, at number one, the best player in the game is unsurprisingly Mark Evans. He's just an absolutely fantastic goalkeeper. There's no scout better than him in his position. And he also has Grenade Shot, which is quite useful for battles. Genuinely, when it comes to choosing the best player in that position, it's going to be Mark Evans. And if that doesn't mean he's top of the story player list because he's basically irreplaceable, then I don't know what else would put someone that high. So yeah, Mark Evans, number one. He has bloody triple defense. He's using the powers of Jack and Todd. It's unstoppable. But there you go. What do you guys think? Do you disagree with any of these picks? If you do, you're wrong. Shush. But also let me know down below in the comments. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And a massive thank you to Zikri AK for all the help with this video. He is absolutely tremendous. Make sure you go and subscribe to his YouTube channel. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.